This is Central Texas Living with Ann Harder. So many things have had to regroup and be reimagined thanks to the pandemic. The Deep in the Heart Film Festival rapidly becoming one of the premier events in Central Texas, but this year taking a big turn in order to keep everybody safe. Joining me now is co-founder Samuel Thomas, and um, it's great to see you again. It was Thanks. fun talking to you and Lewis Hunter, your your uh, colleague in this My work. cohort in crime. Your <laughs> cohort in crime with a Deep in the Heart. And this, this year's is the third? This is actually our fourth. Yeah. The fourth. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, each year getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then this had to happen. Yeah, it... Uh, it's a sad turn of events, you know, for everyone, obviously, but, um, you know, for a lot of live event situations like ours, we're having to make a lot of hard choices about how we want to exist in the time of COVID. And so, um, yeah, and just recently we had to make the sad uh, decision to to uh, to definitely go fully online in a virtual event. But um, but we're, we're trying to, you know, with everything we do and everything we approach, we try to bring our own flavor to it, our own spice, make it more value than most people would get from any other live event. Well, and initially you were thinking maybe you could make it a hybrid event that and have some smaller groups, live, you know, things, but right. that just not is happening. It, it's not. And I will tell you the interesting thing though, we had even from our first year, second year, we had wanted to have a hybrid event because um, we have VIP passes that are available, but we also run our th- our films through two theaters, which means you're really not going to get a chance, even with a VIP pass, to see everything. And so we wanted to have that value add for our VIP pass holders to where, hey, you missed it here. Guess what? It's going to be available for about a week online. You can access it to your own private link. And so we always wanted to have that anyway. And now this does give us a chance, again, turning you know lemons into lemonade to to really flesh it out, fill it out. How does it work? You know, in a back end, and we've got a great um, vendor who's going to help us uh, to set up our entire online situation. So again, you know, as, as disappointing as it is, it's a good learning experience for us. And it's a good way to flesh out some things that we had wanted to do. We want to have a hybrid festival really from, from year two on out, we wanted to have one. And now we, we definitely want to have one from here on out. Uh, this is um, the kind of thing that, that folks are really, you know, drawn to. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's going to be in September. You've got a different date, right? What is that? Right. So that we can do it well. We're not going to try to, to push it into the original August dates. We're mm-hmm. going to push it back. I believe we're going to start September 24th. And so we're going to have premier events uh, that are, you know, uh, kind of on-demand type situations. Uh, that will have the Q&A from filmmakers who will be present as well through, you know, online Zoom calls and such as that. Oh, yeah. And then we'll have those also available for the week after. So whatever block we have, it'll be there for a week, but we're going to have that great like on-demand event for the premiere of it. So how did you get interested in doing this kind of thing Hmm. to put something like this together? Yeah. Uh, So Lewis and I are filmmakers. That's what we do. We were, we actually met in film school, became great friends through that, which is is great. I was a, a groomsman in his wedding and I was already married at the time. But uh, we just became good friends and kept in touch with each other once we left film school. And uh, I was living in Dallas and, and he was actually living in Houston, I believe, at the time. And then, of course, his, his wife's professor at Baylor and she got the job at that point. That was about 10, 12 years ago. And when that happened, he called me up and he's like, hey, I'm about to be an hour and a half away from you. Is that close enough for us to start collaborating again? And I loved it because uh, I had actually been uh working in video production at that point i'd become a an editor and uh, learned to learn the craft more uh through the work i did and so we got together and we just started to do we looked at little you know video contests we could apply for uh 48 hour film contests and then we we were like well we really want to make a good film that can go around the film festival circuit learned a whole bunch like for instance we we were gonna make it a 40 minute short film and and that's a big no-no you need to (laughs) if you're gonna make a short film it's got to be short it needs to be short (laughs) right yeah because if you're gonna go 40 minutes you might as well make it a feature yeah so we actually took that 40 minute uh script and we like boil it down to 18 minutes in in the final run which still for some festivals is actually a little too long uh but we actually got into a lot of festivals with it which which we were happy with because we knew that okay so we we, we're learning some things we need to cut some stuff out but 
we have enough of a story that people enjoyed it. We have enough of a quality that people said this is worth showing. And then from there, we did a, another one. And I think we even did a third uh, short film. And by the time we did the second one, um, we were just really excited about the friendships we had made on the festival circuit, the fun times that we had had traveling to these places, some, you know, we went to Chicago, we've been to, to, uh, to, uh, the Pacific Northwest off in Washington. We've obviously some great ones in Texas. There's the Lone Star Film Festival, which is in Fort Worth. There's the Hill Country F Film Festival, which is in Fredericksburg. Uh, San Antonio Film Festival is great. And obviously you got the really big ones, the Austin Film Festival, South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. Well, we just had a great time at these festivals and, and I can't, I really can't take credit for this, but Lewis and I were driving around Waco one time and he said, I want to show you something. And he went by the Hippodrome and he goes, I, I think, I think we need to see if we can make a film festival here. And, and I was like, Oh, that's, that's going to be an interesting idea. And he and I, we love to put on parties anyway. You know, we like to host people and everything. So it falls in our nature to be as filmmakers and, you know, sort of party hosts that it all just came together. And, we found a great partnership with great people like Fiona Bond mm -hmm. with Creative Waco, who's really come along and kind of been our guiding angel uh, in, in that regard. She's just been you know, such a champion for the arts in general. And then just to, to come alongside us and, and really help us. And we've made great relationships with uh, the Baylor FDM uh, professors there. Uh, they're not, doing some amazing work oh, they are. and and growing up a whole, whole crop of filmmakers right. right and cutting edge too because like for instance like i think it was our second year uh cory carbonara uh he had a virtual um virtual uh i just blinked <laughs> uh vr basically virtual reality uh music video that they put together hmm. and they're you know the whole thing about an educational facility is their whole thing is to say, okay, we've t been told we can't do this, this, and this, cause it'll, it'll, it won't work for this format. So let's see what we can do to push those boundaries. And they created essentially an award-winning virtual uh, reality music video. So you put on that, put on the device and you, you know, look around and everyone's doing the, the song around you. And they did the, um, you know, they did the uh, acapella group with, uh, with Baylor. And it was, it was amazing. It was really well done. And so they were one of our educational panels, I believe our second year, and, and they put that out. And the great thing is we had a filmmaker who, he actually runs a studio up in Dallas, and he had submitted a short film to us, and we accepted it, and he came down. It's a great little short film. It's a really witty, really witty comedy. But he was like, oh, this is amazing, because he, you know, he is an industry person as well. He runs his own studio, and... He was fascinated by that. So just to bring that element in and, and know when we saw that, we were like, yeah, this, this is exactly what we want to do. We want, we want to be uh, telling stories to our Waco community, but we also want the film community to come and say, Hey, you guys are speaking our language too. And so we're really trying to find that, that dovetail that really brings both communities together. From the initial seeds then of the Deep in the Heart mm -hmm. Film Festival, really really identifying with, with Central Texas yes. and Waco. Um, how has it grown? I mean, how, you, yeah. I, I guess in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, it's just going to be local filmmakers. Hmm. There's about to be a lot of them, yeah. really. Yeah, well, we do. I mean, we, we pride ourselves, in, and it's not just local, but we pride ourselves on being a Texas Film mm -hmm. festival. It's it's in the name, deep in the heart. You can't <laughs> you can't say deep in the heart without thinking of you know Texas, that's Texas. Right, that's right. <clears throat> so, uh, so it is it is important to us to uh, champion Texas films, and it's very important for us to champion local films. Uh, what people have to understand too is we put actually a higher standard on local films because we know they have to compete with the other films that are coming in who are you know award winning. Can films or South by Southwest films or Sundance films that are coming to us. Really? We want to be able, yeah, we want to have a block that's strong. Sure. So we put a really high emphasis on the quality of story for these local films that are coming in. And that's, and, you know, we, we can actually forgive a lot of kind of lower production value, but if your story is strong, if you have an idea that you execute well, that's going to win us over all the time. So are you the adjudicators or do you have other people that judge? How, how does the judging yeah. part of this festival work? We're part of the screening team, but we, mm -hmm. excuse me. So we, we have a, one of our lead programmers, uh, his name is Maverick Moore. He's also a professor at Baylor, but he's a filmmaker in his own right. So he's, 
he's one of our lead programmers. We have a whole screening team. We have a whole bunch of screeners. So we have about 10 to 20, depending on the year, screeners who commit to watching our film. So every film that, that is submitted to us is watched by at least two people mm-hmm. before it even goes on past that. And then um, once that all gets put together, everyone you know, comes up with a list of films that they're going to fight for or even films are going to fight against. Uh, and we all, we have this really long programming meeting. And I mean, I say long, I mean, it, it's about 10 days on one day and about another five hours, or sorry, 10 hours on one day and another five hours on another day. I mean, we are just like going over it. We, you know, we take that, that break for one day, just kind of let everything gel and mm-hmm. maybe think about a film we hadn't considered somebody else was yeah. bringing up and, right. and find all that. So it's a really intensive process for us. You know, again, we, we want to give all the filmmakers due diligence. Mm-hmm. We are very, you know, strict about what we do. I think we have, I think it depends on, on the year, about a 15 to 20% acceptance rate. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really, what, what does that mean? Explain. Oh yeah. So, um, so basically, you're going to have a number of films submitted to mm-hmm. your festival. You, you can't show them all. So, sure. so the idea is that you want to get the cream of the crop. And that again, that makes that does require a lot of hard decisions because sometimes there's a film that's great quality. It just doesn't fit the tone of your own festival or you can't find a spot for it to fit with you know, other films in a film block. Mm. So it's nothing against the film itself. It's just how does it fit in your, in your programming as a whole. So we had to make those hard decisions. Uh, and that basically means that, uh, you know, out of the hundred percent of films that are come in 15 to 20% are actually going to be the ones you're going to have time to screen. Mm. Uh, just cause you know, you have, again, you have two theaters running at once, but you've only got so many days, which means so many hours. And and, and that's another reason why I suggest to people, you know, if they want to make a short film, you got to make it short because if I'm going to sit there, <laughs> right. Hey, if I, I mean, it, it's funny because there are exceptions to every rule, but if I'm going to sit there and have a 40 minute film submitted to me, when I know that I could put two 20 minute films in there mm-hmm. that are just as good quality or three 10 minute films in there or variation on that, that's going to be your 40 minute film better blow me away for me to say, I will take away two other films who could be coming to this festival to put you in. But we actually did like our second year, we actually had a film. that was about 40 minutes long. So powerful, so amazing, so well done that like across the board it was in, not only was it in, it it won our our award for best film that year. Yeah. So are all the films that are screened, are they, they have to be done within this calendar year? How does that work? Are some of these from way back that people have been working on? We actually have a, a, a longer limit than most film festivals mm-hmm. because we we understand that, you know, there's such a short shelf life, especially because we do focus on short films more than features. We have features, but we focus on short films more than features. And short films, you know, you get it for most films, festivals, they, they get a two-year run and then they're done because most film festivals say, hey, if it's over two years, we, we don't want it. We actually have a five-year mm. limit because we – we understand how much work goes into yeah. a short film that we want to give people a chance to let it mm-hmm. have life a lot longer than, than what other film festivals would. Now I'm not saying all film festivals do that, but most film festivals are about a two year cutoff, but we go to five. You mentioned the the film that, that won the festival. What does it mean to a filmmaker to, to get out? Do they get a little symbol that they can put on the screen or, you know, mm-hmm. how, it's no, definitely. more than just bragging rights. I mean, there's got to right. be some some value to winning a film festival, right? Definitely. And it is. And it is something good for, um, especially for feature films, to be able to have wins. It mm-hmm. helps them with their distribution. Uh, uh-huh. Short film distribution is not as common as feature film. It's becoming more now that Amazon is taking on short films and Netflix even brings in short films. So that helps a lot. And to show those wins, to show that people appreciated your film enough to give it an award uh, does help with, you know, with the life on online after the festival. Mm, okay. So, and you, and then you said programming, I mean, you, you kind of work like a, like a program director where you've got different categories mm-hmm. of types of films. Yeah. So uh, and you mentioned horror films being a right. huge genre, I guess. It is. It's a, it's a big genre for us. We, we found, it was interesting. We, uh, we found our first year and even our second year it became really clear how we were we were getting actually a completely different crowd coming in for those blocks. We have really? a horror and then we have what we call a WTF and I'll let people fill in that that hole for that. But that <laughs> uh, 
exactly. Uh, <laughs> but we found we had we had an overlap crowd, but we had a new crowd coming in that we didn't have for our other mm-hmm. blocks. And so we were like, this is this is awesome. These are new people that we didn't get to to know about, and and they're enjoying our films, and we wanted to to celebrate that every year. So we we really focus on making sure we have a good horror flock, uh, horror block, or good WTF block, and a, and a good family block, and. Between those three, those are the two that I'll never, ever cross. But Mm -hmm. what we do for all of our other blocks is what we we do is called a mixtape situation. So we actually, so for every film that comes in, once we start knowing we've got these anchor films that are just solid, they're definitely going to get in uh, quality, there's no question, we're going to fight for these. We start to build blocks around those and we start to see themes emerge. So for instance, this year, we actually have one that's it's a bit on the nose, but I think for everybody, it's they're going to like this. It's basically tw- called 2020 in a Nutshell. Oh. Yeah. And so it it does, you know, look at some some modern problems that are coming, especially because of COVID or mm-hmm. just, you know, other crazy things that are happening in 2020. It, it's interesting. We actually had a short film that was submitted. It's a student film, but they did a really good job. And they hit the gold mine because they did this back in the fall of 2019 is when they made this. Mm-hmm. And it's essentially about the um, back with Johnny Carson, when he mentioned uh, on air that there was a toilet paper shortage, it caused a run the on next toilet. morning all around. So they did a short film about the toilet paper shortage back in the seventies and voila, it was prophetic. It was prophetic. <clears throat> so yeah, in fact, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm still like, I go to Costco and I still have to, you know, hit it right on the right day. Luckily, you know, <laughs> it, people do not need as much as they think they do, yeah. but you know, it's funny to see like no toilet paper still. Uh, so yeah, it just, it just was like, these guys hit the gold mine because uh, it was it was well told, especially for a student film. It's a well told student film and it had subject matter that was very relevant to today, even though it was talking about a real event that happened back in the 70s. So we have a block like that. We have other blocks that just have different themes that come up based off of the combination of films in that block. So we call them mixtapes because we're really putting a we're not we don't want to like there's people in life who say, you know, I'm not a big documentary person. For instance, my wife. When she before she met me, she's like, "Oh, I hate documentaries," because mm. she's thinking of the old National Geographic, yeah, yeah, rig- the narrator, right, kind of, yeah, totally stuff like mm-hmm. that. And I was like, "Really?" So challenge accepted. So I, <laughs> I actually showed her documentaries that I knew she'd like. And and what we what we realize as the programmers is, people are going to think, "Oh, I don't like dramas, or I don't like comedies, or I don't like documentaries." But if you don't put that as a genre on the block because we see too many film festivals doing, oh, this is, a, this is our documentary block. Nobody's going to come see that if they think they don't like mm-hmm. documentary. But if you say this is a block about X, Y, Z, mm. people are like, oh, that intrigues me. I'll go watch that. Go and then we, then we put a mix in. So we put a mix of drama, of comedy, of documentary. So like a box of chocolates. A box of chocolates. Don't know what you're getting to get. Exactly. So they get out <laughs> of that and they find out, hey, I actually enjoyed what I didn't think I was going to yeah. enjoy. Yeah. So your at home edition, this is the Deep in the Heart Film Festival at home edition, and uh, it's going to be in September, the last part of September. It is going to be several days, right? Right. It is. We are we're going to have essentially we're going to have these debut blocks and then the film block itself will be available uh, after that for uh, VIP passes. Definitely you can purchase a virtual VIP pass where you could do the you know, purchase a block ticket. For that one and that'll so the block will open up say on the 24th and then it'll be available for the next five days that kind of thing mm-hmm. so folks we'll still you know you'll charge a fee mm-hmm. right right uh, and they'll we'll have, keep it low they'll, and they'll have access to you know chats with the filmmakers right. and it, for actors, the initial blocks and, and you're, you're still doing the um kind of i guess seminars for lack of a, right. lack panels. Of a better term yeah panel mm-hmm. discussions like <clears throat> on acting and just yes. how how the business is right we have going. that we're going to the panels and obviously that'll be on zoom calls and then of course mm-hmm. you know uh, we're actually going to be partnering with rogue media and i believe the brazos theater we're going to have we have uh, we had opened up a new category this year for scripts for screenplays oh. and so we are going to have now virtual readings and i know brazos theater did the great um 
they've done some great online plays mm-hmm. and they've done yes, some I improv had Beth, uh, on this uh, right, podcast right. I heard talking that about that and that right and how how their yeah. local screenwriters who are just writing some funny yes. fantastic yeah. scripts there's a local screenwriters but there's also the local actors so mm-hmm. we're going to essentially have our local actors through the Brazos theater and through Rogue, Rogue Media reading the screenplays that were submitted that Good. we accepted so we have about 10 to 11 mm-hmm. uh, scripts and we're going to do about and depending on they don't have to be short scripts, but we're only going to read about 10 pages of it. Mm-hmm. And Just that to way, give enough of a flavor. Exactly. Give a flavor. Yeah. G- give the script writer themselves a chance to hear what it sounds like. Yeah. And, and so it's going to be a really fun uh, online situation with that. So but there'll be that. There'll be panels. Uh, there'll be Q&As. We're actually going to, and I'm not going to give everything away, but for, for people, especially if you have a VIP pass, we're going to have some um, contests that... Mm-hmm. Uh, if they watch all the films, there's a, there's a prize at the end if they can answer some questions we've got. So yeah. it's going to be fun. I'm making a lot of fun. Well, it, just the whole concept behind the Deep in the Heart Film Festival is is wonderful. It's a great, great addition to the quality of life in Central Texas. But before we end, I'd like to end these visits with a kind of a questionnaire, if you remember the late, great James Lipton. You yeah. know, you've heard this. You've heard this. So you probably already have a have a little idea okay. of uh, the kind of questions, but we'll start off with what is your favorite word? What is my favorite word? Um, so, so being an editor by trade, uh, uh, story is very important to me and just the, the flow of a project is very important. So flow is probably my favorite word, F L O W. I how, gotcha. Yeah. How it flows. Uh, and that just goes for everything I, I do. I like, I like to, have one thing kind of flow into the other mm-hmm. seamlessly. A good segue. I mean, you just exactly. can't. You just can't beat it. <laughs> What's your least favorite word? Goodness. Uh, probably. Yeah. Goodbye. I think is my least favorite word. Mm, yeah. Okay. I don't like goodbyes. <laughs> what What turns you on creatively or spiritually? Wow. Uh, emotionally. Yeah. What What kind of checks the boxes for you? You know, I think I mentioned it earlier. Um, when I see a brilliant idea well executed, because there's a lot of brilliant ideas out there. In fact, I think I get bothered more when I see a story or a film that has a great idea and then it just kind of botches the execution of it. But yeah, yeah when I see a brilliant idea, creative or not, well executed, well told, well related, uh, that just gets me. Even if I disagree with it, it's just, oh, I'm like, oh, good, good good argument or good whatever you know so yeah you made it made a good stab at that well you may have uh, answered then that what turns you off mm. then creatively uh, i don't like people being shut down i'd, I'd like I, even if i disagree with somebody i want to i think everybody should be given a chance to say what they want to say if they're wrong okay they're wrong but or if the, you know if it doesn't jibe with you know if the story doesn't jibe with you but if someone you know is is not given a chance to say what they want to say. I think that bothers me. Yeah, I think we'd all be better off if there were yeah. a little more listening and a lot of listening. Yeah. Um, what sound? Speaking of listening, what sound do you love the most? Mm. <laughs> you know, it's funny. This actually goes back to editing too, because um, in editing, there's a lot of pauses, a lot of breaths. I love this. Breathing is a very calming thing to hear someone breathe. So I think breathing is good, whether you're with a loved one and you know, you're quiet and you can hear them breathing or, you know, I have, I have three boys. So just to be able to, when they (laughs) they were, I've never heard anybody say that before. Well, as an editor, you, you, I edit on breaths. I mean, um, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. I want to make sure like I, you know, somebody says something and then they say something else and you, that if you don't hear that, People actually miss it. If you cut too closely. Mm-hmm. Oh, they can tell. It's been compressed. Right. Yeah. And so I always try to edit on breaths. Uh, interesting. Well, what sound do you hate? Uh, what sound do I hate? Um, hmm. This is a stumper. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. What sound do I hate? Um, I really, I couldn't, I just top okay. my head. I can't, nothing's coming to mind. Um, Nothing, nothing great's on your nerves you know, then. Probably, you know, if there's a glitch in a timeline that I have to edit, <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, what am I going to do with this? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, what other profession would you like to try? Well, believe it or not, at one point I was going to be a civil engineer. 
but uh, the art side of that is an architect. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely love to be an architect at some point. But I will tell you, you know, the funny thing is um, my wife and I have talked about this and, and I've become a bit of a coffee snob lately. And, and at some point I'd actually, I really would like to open up my own coffee shop. Uh, there's <laughs> I'll a lot come of there and drink it. That's awesome. for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. There's a lot of them out. There's a lot of great ones, especially in oh, Waco. Yeah. There's a lot of great oh, ones. Oh, there are. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be in Waco to compete with anybody. And <laughs> it's just a, wherever my wife ends up with, with her career, I'll probably travel with her and, and do that. But uh, yeah, you know, at some point, you know, have my own shop. What job do you know you wouldn't want to do at all? Mm. Yeah. Uh, so going through college, I had this job and basically it would be, <laughs> it'd be, uh, being stuck in a cube cubicle for a corporate situation yeah. and add on top of that, you know, having to sell something. So like for instance, and I didn't have to do this, thank God, but like telemarketer just, I just, I just, I don't envy those guys. I don't want them to talk to me, but I don't envy them either. <laughs> I'd hate to be a telemarketer. I hate to have to sell something yeah. to somebody, Yeah. yeah. especially being stuck in a, in a cube in the middle of, I'm, oh, I'm, right. I'm right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, finally, what do you want to hear God say to you as you arrive at the pearly gates? I would want him to say, hey, all those questions you've had, let's talk about the answers. Yeah. That's the time to get them. Exactly. It's about <laughs> the only time I think I'm going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, it has been great. Thank and you. again, it has. one more time, the the uh, Deep in the Heart Film Festival at Home Edition at home will edition. be or, happening in September. Or the Dogs on Couch Edition. That's our <laughs> that's our marketing thing. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And and they can find out more. You have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Where all can they go to? Yeah. Learn so more? definitely Facebook. I believe if you just put in Deep in the Heart FF as one word on Facebook, it'll pop us there. Or just look at for Deep in the Heart Film Festival. Deep in the Heart FF is also our Instagram handle. And I believe on Twitter, it's D-I-T-H-F-F. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, if you look up the hashtag D-I-T-H-F-F, that's our, that's our main hashtag. So, yeah. Okay. So Check you can open your world to yeah. some great things. Right. And if they do go to our website, there's usually a pop-up for a newsletter. They're mm -hmm. more than welcome to sign up for our newsletter. And that'll, that'll get them that information even quicker. Okay, good. Well, all my best to uh, to Lewis, yes. and and I know it's gonna it's gonna be great, gonna be different. It is, but we will still look forward then to yeah. next year when everybody can be together in person. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah it's all right. Be solid. Thanks. Thanks Thank you. so much, Samuel. Thank you, Anne. Central Texas Living is part of the Rogue Media Network family. Be sure to check out their other shows at RogueMediaNetwork.com. Please rate us five stars on iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Living, the podcast. about Waco. So you may be asking yourself, why am I here? I'm here to be your tour guide through Waco. I'm here to tell you all the goings on in and around Waco. I'm going to give you the 411 on what's happening, what's going on, and what events you should go to. This is your host, Debbie, signing off. Now that you know, go. Just go, Waco. You are going on a run. This has been a Globe Media Network Podcast.